Printing in FreeBSD can seem like a daunting task. In this video, I'll show you both the proper way to do it and also a quick and dirty way to do it. Right, the first way we're gonna do this is the quick and dirty way. These things are already installed on this system. So what I'm gonna do is just simply at the end of the line, press Control C to create a new line and cancel the command. But it'll give you a clue as to what you should put in. First, we PKG install cups. Uh, without cups, really, we're not going to get there very far. And like I say, on this system, it's already installed. Uh, next is do as PKG install Guten Print or Guten Print. Next, we're going to add to rc.conf using the sysrc tool. Do as sysrc cups d underscore enable equals yes. And that will start the cups daemon when we start the computer. It's already enabled, so yes uh, equals yes. So there's no change really on this system. Do as sysrc cups underscore browse uh, underscore enable next we're going to do do as sysrc lpd underscore enable equals yes we'll actually need this uh, usually it's no but we'll need this on this occasion because the, the quick and dirty way that we're going to do this next is do as service lpd start so we're going to start it right now plus it'll start when you boot the machine next is do as service Cups D start. Like I say, it's already running on this system, so the message is going to be slightly different on yours if you haven't already run him. Next, it's do as service cups underscore browse D start. So everything that we put into the rc.com file, we can start up as a system process right now. Just going to fast forward this bit, drag over the browser so we can have a look at the cups homepage, as it were for your locally running cup server. So it's usually localhost colon 631. We click on administration. When you log in as root, it's not something I always advocate, but in this occasion, because we're adding a printer, it's uh, usually best. And the Xerox B230 is already being installed on this uh, computer. So um, it's showing up and it's connected via USB. And in this part under policy default, we hashtag out the default job private access entries, and we leave the subscription private access default values as they are, and we enter instead job private access all and job private values none. So really they're the only two entries that we change. And underneath in the limit create job print job print URI validate job, good grief, we put order deny allow, as you can see on the screen. Once that's done, it'll Restart the server with the new uh, changes that we just made. Right, now, click on administration and add printer. We'll do it the manual way. We're not gonna choose one that's already been uh, installed. We're going to choose, go down to app socket forward slash HP jet direct. So socket, and we just do call on to forward slash and put the address of your network printer. In my case, it's 192.168.174. And then do call on 9100 and continue. Give it a name so it can be easily recognized. In this case, I'm just going to call it uh, test, I think. I think it's called test, isn't it? Description test. Continue. You can share this printer if you wish. Uh, it's entirely to you. Press continue. Right. In this particular part, we want in a make and model of a printer. And we're using a quick and dirty generic way. So if you go down to maker and we'll have a look at generic. Because I don't think they've got the maker model of this printer in there anyway. So generic and continue. Right, the next part, we need to define it as generic IPP everywhere printer. Which is... Oh, it's right there. That's pretty cool. So select that one. And I think we can add printer. And there we go. You can change media size here and a few other settings if you want to. And once you're happy with the paper size, etc., and you can change other things like options, installed banners, policies, etc. So we're happy with that. To set defaults, and there we go. And there is a printer set up. And of course, you'll need to test the printer. Otherwise, uh, when it comes to printing something else, it's not going to work. And you wonder why is it not working? It's because you didn't test it and change it. So I'm going to test this printer by doing a print test page. And it's test 87. And here it is. It's printed out. Not very, not very good photograph, unfortunately. My camera is not very good. And there it is. Look close up. Test 87 using the uh, generic driver of a network printer. And it works quite well. So uh, I'm quite happy with that. If you want on the other hand to... Um, well, there it is. Look, there's the uh, there's a new one and the old one that I installed uh, that I use on a daily basis. That one works quite well. So it would be a USB connection. But you know, a quick and dirty way of doing the network printer. 
I will show you how you can set it up via USB. Like I say, this works for mine. Your own circumstances is different. Uh, the drivers you'll need will probably undoubtedly be different. Um, it may work, it may not work. It, it does take a lot of trial and error to get to a uh, satisfactory uh, result, really. FreeBSD can be a little bit frustrating that way. So, we're on administration. I'm going to add a printer. I'm going to select the local printer. I'm going to make a copy of it and call it, oh, I don't know, uh, B230 B2 Printer 2. So, selecting that one, because I know it works. And we are trying to connect it via USB, so, yeah. Right. I know for a fact uh, that the model isn't listed. There's got a lot of Xeroxes available, but not the model I have. So, I'm going to use a PPD file, which contains everything that you need. The driver, etc. So, searching for Xerox B230. Again... You put your own name of your printer in and follow it by PPD, and you should perhaps go to the home page of the printer manufacturer. Xerox has got quite good support for uh, Windows and Linux users who want the PPDs, and indeed it shows you the how to install PPD and print from a Linux workstation, which is pretty cool. It does apply to us, even though we're using FreeBSD. If you're using Linux, it's the same process, basically. Right, so we're going to go down to uh, actually download it. So I'll click... Agree to the terms and conditions and press download. And it doesn't take two seconds, of course, it's only a small file. And go to the download folder after you've unzipped it, and you'll see two subdirectories. You've got Linux and Windows. Of course, it goes without saying that uh, we will need to use the Linux version. And in that, you get a B225, B230, B235. I need the middle one, a 230. Of course, yours may differ depending on which model of printer you have. So selecting that should uh, get us up and going. Add printer. And there we go. I'm just going to set default options there. And there it is. So uh, let's have a look at manage printers. And there it is. Listed. There's the new one. And you can set that as default or indeed anything you want to do. And again, if we just put the print test page to see if everything's working. There's the test page. Even though the print job is number 88 and now it says print job 92. I just, uh, a few pages needed to be redone. But there, so it works. Of course, I added the printer location as kitchen. So yeah, it, dif it differentiates it from the other one. Uh, there is more information on how to get uh, a wider range of printers up and going. If you go to the FreeBSD Foundation, there's a printing on FreeBSD Quick Guide. It just really goes through all the different types of printers, USB, parallel. Oh, and network printers as well, which is pretty cool. This is like a, a boiled down summary, really. But if you want the full in-depth instruction... The FreeBSD Handbook, Chapter 9, Printing, uh, will give you more or less everything you need. Like I say, it contains the same information as what you've just seen on the FreeBSD Foundation one, but this this is a bit more in-depth. Anyway, this is a, a particular topic that I'm asked quite a lot, and I have shied away from doing it because there are so many different variables and variations that uh, apply to this, but hopefully that this has proven to be useful in some way. Anyway, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you next time.